Rocky Top Tom is throwing high, hot heat, uh, just like the Vols did in the Super Regional. He says, Monty Kiffin's son is incredibly overrated. Let's go there for a second. Here's where I stand on Lane Kiffin. So he's one of the few coaches I actually developed a relationship with and that, you know, I yeah, I call him and, and, and that sort of thing. So maybe I'm biased. I do not think he is overrated at all because I think he is a fantastic offensive mind. I think that he was standing on triple, uh, standing on third, thought he hit a triple when he was at Tennessee and with the Raiders and when Washington made a run at him and Tennessee got him instead. But overrated as a coach, I'm not willing to go there. I think he's a special play caller. I think he's a special offensive mind. I think he derailed his career when he left Tennessee too quickly for a school in Southern California that had NCAA issues pressing down upon them. So I ask you, I say no. I ask you, is Lane Kiffin overrated? Not as a football mind. As a CEO running a program, yes. I think Lane Kiffin is very reckless. And I think he takes risk that quite honestly let's go back to his Tennessee year that one year okay let's hypothetically think if Lane Kiffin stays at Tennessee and doesn't go to USC Lane Kiffin was so desperate to sell himself and what he was doing that he took the most toxic recruiting class in the history of college football in 2009 and put that thing together more and... felons than all SEC players and you can actually look that up Yes, exactly. And it was a top 10 class. And he bragged about it. And halfway through the year, Nukis Richardson out here goes goes out and decides to rob a gas station. And by the way, Nukis Richardson was the player that was the catalyst for Lane Kiffin taking that shot at Urban Meyer that the, made him the yeah. most hated. He also took a shot at Pahokee. He's like, have you ever been there? You want to get out of there? I'm like... How can you go back there and recruit? Travis says Lane Kiffin has proven absolutely nothing on his own, that is. All right, Travis, I'm not trying to argue with you, but I would present this. One of the things I really liked about Lane Kiffin when he was hired at Tennessee, and maybe this is a whole different segment, Caleb, all of a sudden. But one of the things I did like about Lane Kiffin is that he went out and he hired the Ed Orgerons, the Frank Wilsons. Uh, I could go on and on and on. Uh, of course, his dad, who he had an inside with Monty, but he did delegate a lot. And I thought that was mature beyond his years. So I think to take a shot at him and say he didn't do, he hasn't done anything on his own is unfair. I mean, I'm I'm pretty proud of what we put together each and every day on offthehooksports.com. I sure as bleep aren't doing it on my own. Caleb and Caleb are a big part of what we do and a huge monstrous part so I actually think that's a strength. Now, maybe Monty Kiffin opened the door, but if you don't call your dad and he's one of the best defensive coaches in the history of football, you're just an idiot. Yeah, see, Dave, I pushed back on that, and I've covered enough college football now to say that I've seen enough Tennessee hires to know this much. You hire the coach for the coach, not for the staff they can bring in. And Do you my, really? my, Yes, Mike Cam because staff comes and goes. Mike Hamilton hired Lane Kiffin solely because of the staff Lane Kiffin could bring in. I screamed at the time Brian Kelly was a better hire. I think I've been proven right on that, by the way. The you Brian have, Kelly's a better you have and, and I would have argued with you. I, I love the splash hire of Lane Kiffin. I don't know that I would have argued with you based off pedigree and what they did, but I love the splash hire and the staff he could put together. Yeah, see, the thing with the staff you can put together is staff members get hired away, they come and go. Let, let's think of the great coaches of the past 10, 15 years. We named one a minute ago, Urban Meyer. Yes, he's a sociopath, but let's be honest. Urban Meyer, his success has been immune to his staff members. He won national titles with Charlie Strong and oh, who was the and Dan Mullen. And then he won one with Luke Fickle and Tom Herman. I mean, it didn't matter. Nick Saban has won how many national championships with how many different staff members? Josh Heupel right now. You think anybody cares? That Tennessee just lost its offensive coordinator? Do you think anybody cares if Tim Banks goes? No. The person who matters is Josh Heupel at the top. And this, it, and so when you're – the only time this matters is when you have a CEO like Dabo Sweeney who does hire staff, the right staff, but it's not like he's like, I can get the big name. No, he finds the guy that's an up-and-comer that has a cutting-edge offense to run his system. 
And so Dabo has done a very good job. At, Dabo does a very good job at identifying staff members of the future. Just saying I've got connections to these really high-profile coaches, well, they're going to get hires elsewhere. I mean, Ed Orgeron since then went and won a national title. I mean, that's hilarious to say, but he did. And Monty Kiffin ended up going to the NFL. I, I just I, I don't believe you hire a coach because of the big name staff members they can bring in because staff comes and goes. Man, I'm I, I if somebody sits down and I understand that the staff will come and go in two or three or four years. But if I'm an athletic director and I'm interviewing Lane Kiffin and he said, I'm bringing me. No, you're not getting a job. You better say you're bringing money. You better say you're tight with a guy named Ed Orgeron. You better say that you're tight with a guy named Frank Wilson, who's one of the top recruiters in the state of Louisiana. You better bring all that to the table. I'm not saying it's sustainable for a decade, but if you don't bring that to the table, you're not getting hired. It's, but see, that's the problem. As a matter of fact, I just named Ed Orgeron. How do you think Ed Orgeron got the, L the LSU job in the first place? He sold LSU on the connections that he has and the staff he could bring. And to his credit, he brought But he was right. Yeah, he was he right. Was right. And guess what happened when those guys left? The program collapsed. But would anybody other than Alabama and Georgia not take a one-year wonder and the subsequent disaster that was Ed Orgeron if they had a national title in their pocket? Yes, you do, but do you – I don't think Tennessee was hiring Lane Kiffin for five years. I think they were thinking 20, 25, whatever years when they hired Lane Kiffin during that time. So I, I don't – again, it, Ed, that is such a flash in the pan. What happens – because if you don't win the national title and those coaches go and your program falls apart, well, then you sacrifice the long-term stability of your program for one splash year that got your staff members hired away. So are you telling me – that Josh Heupel, hands down, is a better coach than Lane Kiffin. First, I want to tell you, it's brought to you by Bassey Lawn and Guard. Man Alive, it's worth the drive right there in Cleveland, Tennessee. Make the drive from Nashville, Knoxville, or Chattanooga with their buying power. They'll save you thousands of dollars on your industrial or commercial mowers, residential as well. Go to Bassey.com to learn more. They bring you the ball report with Jacob Warren that is up on our YouTube channel now. Bassey Lawn and Guard, Man Alive, it's worth the drive. Bassey.com, Toro, count on it. So you're telling me that based off what you said, the assistants don't matter as much because if Banks or any of Tennessee's coaches left, Heupel would be able to replace them. You're saying that Josh Heupel is a significantly better coach than Lane Kiffin right now. That's your stance. I'd say better, not significantly, because the thing you have to remember, what, we, what we're missing in all of this, Lane is a good offensive mind. If you're going to make so a case, Josh for Heupel like, now that, that, that no, that's, what, that, that's why I said Heupel's better. Heupel's a better coach than Lane. I'm saying, I we were debating over whether or not you should hire a coach for staff. That doesn't mean I discount what Lane knows about offense. I think he's a great offensive coach, but yes, Heupel's better. Heupel's a better offensive coach, and I think that's borne out in facts. I think that's proven at this point that he's a better offensive coach. Heupel's had more offensive success. And if you question it, don't forget before Tennessee, Heupel single-handedly got Missouri back to a bowl game in year two when they were the most disastrous program in the SEC in 2017. Lane Kiffin, and he's got Tennessee rolling. Lane Kiffin got fired from USC. Our defense of Lane Kiffin is that USC was a program under sanctions, probation, yada, yada, yada. Well, what the heck was Tennessee when Josh Heupel took over? Right. Fair point. 